at one point, I mean, you're getting so tired and dehydrated and we had water, but I was riding ahead of my partner and he saw me disappear from sight with the rear wheel in the air. I went over a cliff, basically straight down to a rock, hard pan bottom. It was about a 12 to 15 foot drop, nose first. Let's ride. Hey, everybody, welcome to the Moto Mission Adventure podcast. Today, I have Joe DePew with me. And uh, if you saw my like recent, most recent video, then you saw he and I kind of serendipitously collided uh, our paths in Tomichi Creek at uh, Sargent's there. And uh, we started riding together. And so I put out a video and people seem to like it. But there was one thing that we're going to talk about uh, on this podcast that was, I don't know, it was probably my big mistake. It was probably me being, I don't know, ignorant or, or just not thinking. I don't know what it was, but we're going to talk about that here in just a minute and uh, hopefully clear up maybe some confusion that some of you might have on something that I did recently. And uh, so you'll we'll, we'll figure that out here in a second. But uh, enough about me. I got to bring in a guy that you've seen on YouTube. He has his own channel. He, he, it's It's fantastic. He's an adventure writer. He goes all over the place. And I'm here to ask him some and uh, stories about his adventures. So please welcome Joe DePew. Hey, buddy. Hi. Hey, man. Great to be with you today on this snowy, wintry day. You got the fireplace going. That's a perfect setting. I, I have a fireplace going because I am snowed in here in Tennessee. We have like about once a year, we get like a pretty big snowstorm and it's now. And so I'm five or six inches deep in snow, which... For some people in the country think that's no big deal, but for here, that's 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 kind of a big deal. <laughs> Got about six or seven inches came down last night and yesterday too. Now, are your roads closed? Like, is it that kind of is it that kind of snow? Uh, well, I live at the dead end of uh, eight tenths mile country road, butts right up against the Blue Ridge Mountains and the Shenandoah National Park, and. I'm low down on the priority for them to plow me out, but I got a tractor, but I have nowhere to go and no reason to be there. <laughs> there you go. I have a huge hill where I live and I have a, my driveway is about, uh, I think it's like a quarter of a mile. It's like a really long, steep driveway and it's part gravel and part um, uh, concrete, but it can get kind of slippery. So I have to use my four wheel drive to get out of here. But uh well, hey, let's jump into this. We want to talk about you. And like I said, we're going to get into a big mistake that I made. And hopefully people will give me some grace here. And we're, we're going to talk about that here in a minute. But uh, let's talk about you. You've been, uh, g give me your background. Let's start with giving your background because I oh. want to talk about you riding <laughs> across the country. That's very intriguing. But how did we, how did we get here? Tell me your background. How did we get here? Uh, like how far back From, you want to go? Yes. So, um, <laughs> from like normal life and career to uh, now you're adventure riding. Uh, give me a little bit of a backstory. I got you. Uh, I'm a career pilot, 35 years, 25 with a major airline and retired in 2015. That was an adventurous life. It really uh, fulfilled that adventure side of me. I've flown Bush in Alaska, medevacs, uh, smoke jumpers, fire patrol. And I love all of that. And so the airline career ended in 2015 and <clears throat> I started searching for something <laughs> to fill my life. And the Transamerica trail popped up on my radar and having not ridden motorcycles much since my twenties, I said, that's what I got to do. And I started searching, to, settled on a DR650, modified that out and hit the trail across from Virginia to Oregon in 2019 with a, a group of like-minded guys. And that I've been doing adventure riding ever since, every, every year, something extensive. How long did it take you to get across the Transamerica Trail? Uh, it took us longer than usual. It took uh, six weeks. 
uh, <clears throat> a good week of that was taken up with one of my friend. My one of my friends had a lot of mechanical problems. His bike wasn't ready to go, and we held up in uh, Teleco Plains, Tennessee, for a number okay. of days trying to get his bike going, doing all kinds of stuff to it. So that kind of uh, took up a little time. Plus, uh, I had a very uh, I had a very close call in uh, Utah, and uh, it took a few days to recover and decide whether I could keep on going or head to medical care. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Wow, that's incredible. But for those that maybe don't know, I'm going to just recap what the what or define what the Trans-America Trail is. It's It's a dirt road system all the way across America. I did it in 22, I think it was, and... It's an incredible experience. It's a it's somewhat of a rite of passage uh, for serious adventure riders. Like that's kind of the that's kind of the big one, right? Like it's uh, it's six thousand miles across the country of dirt of dirt roads, dirt paths, and it's ninety five percent ish uh, dirt, and uh, it's just an incredible experience. So I'm sure you have plenty of stories. Plenty of stories, yeah. <clears throat> um... I enjoyed every bit of it. Uh, you know, it, it's not really hard and many people have it on their bucket list. My videos, those were the very first ones I ever even, I bought the cheapest Chinese camera I could find, slapped it on someplace on my helmet and no audio. It was a mess, but I cleaned up those videos and to this very day, they're at the top of uh, videos that are clicked on. So many people are interested in obtaining knowledge and want to do it and plan on doing it. So it's a yeah. it's a big ADV bucket list. Yeah, sure, sure. And where did you start? I know, like the uh, the traditional like starting line is Teleco Plains, but oftentimes people start. And they've extended it now out to a couple different routes. I started like uh, at Cape Hatteras on North Carolina on the on the island, uh, whatever. But, but where where did you start? I started right out from my home here, uh, which is about midway on the Mid Atlantic Backcountry Discovery Route. That's only about seventy miles from my home. So <clears throat> three of us jumped on that. Three of us from Virginia, Northern Virginia. We just left my home, rode straight over to the Mid-Atlantic uh, Backcountry Discovery Route, headed south on that to Damascus, uh, Virginia, and and then down and joined the TAT where you came in from North Carolina. Uh, we, we joined that just about at the North Carolina-Tennessee line somewhere in there. Uh, That's amazing. What? What um, did you have like a favorite part of the Trans America Trail, like a certain state or a certain area? Did you have a favorite? Um, <clears throat> well, uh, probably crossing the Rockies, uh, Engineer Pass, and going down to um, Ure from Un Engineer Pass. That was uh, <laughs> for a for a country virginia boy that was that was eye-opening i'd seen it from the uh, from an airplane a lot but it's a little different when you're uh, on a motorcycle <laughs> that's awesome yeah I and, I, I'd say, and utah was i mean the desert of utah is just hard to beat but uh i was in over my head there uh as far as understanding what i was up against and getting into both me and uh, the guy I was riding with. Tell me the about heat. that. I mean, it, was, it was in the end of <laughs> like the worst time to be out in the middle of Utah, the end of August. And um, we were following three or four other guys that were part of our group, but they were a day or so ahead of us. And out of, as we left Colorado and headed into Utah, we saw a shortcut. We thought a shortcut, um, to catch up with them some uh, from basically if people know Monticello, uh, Utah area, <clears throat> you can take a, it showed up as a shortcut. It's the, yeah, it goes through and over to Moab, but oh man, the, the name of that 
was it Lockhart Basin? Lockhart Basin, yeah. It went through Lockhart Basin, <laughs> unloaded. That's ta- crazy. Yeah. We didn't realize. I didn't realize. Tough. We were in a motel in uh, Dove Creek, ready to head into Utah. And we said, oh, that's a shortcut. We'd catch up with them. It was really great until about one o'clock in the afternoon when we realized we weren't even halfway through there and it was getting worse and worse and the heat and yeah, that, but such awesome country through there, but Lockhart basin in this middle of the summer, it's no, it's an expert section on the Utah BDR. We didn't know any of that. And, uh, at one point, I mean, you're getting so tired and dehydrated and we had water, but I was riding ahead of my partner and he saw me disappear from sight with the rear wheel in the air. I went over a cliff, basically straight down to a rock, hard pan bottom. It was about a 12 to 15 foot drop nose first. And uh, I landed right on the front wheel of the DR and it went up on its windshield and over onto the right and fell right on my right foot and just smashed that sucker. And um, (laughs) other than that, uh, my friend was a retired uh, army specialist and uh, medic and he come riding up and told me to set my butt down i was already up trying to figure out how i'm going to get out of there he said go get in some shade and sit down but we managed he managed to come down into that draw ride my bike out of that little canyon and back up onto the trail then his battery was dead couldn't get his bike started because he'd left the key and the light on to rescue me yeah we had to charge up his battery and get him started and then that was just the start of the arduous day we uh, my one of my water bladders busted in that crash, so it was down a liter of water, and then it got dark on us, and we reached. I don't know if you've ever been through there, but the the very hardest canyon that is just boulders straight down, straight down. I reached the top of that at dusk, and he was somewhere behind me, and I waited and waited and waited for him. Meanwhile, my foot is just. I didn't take my boot off because I knew if I did, I'd probably never get it back on. And uh, it got dark and he didn't show. And I started trudging back up the trail, counting my steps. I think I counted off eight, 900 steps before I could see his flashlight. His bike was jammed in some rocks and he managed to get free, came down there. And I just, I told him I can't go anymore. And I, I laid out in the dirt at the top of that Canyon draw and fell asleep, just laying in the dirt. And, uh, eventually he shook me and woke me up. And he's, he's a 20 year army special forces guy. So even though he was little, he had a lot of, a lot of, uh, know how well he shook me and said joe we got to go uh we can't stay around here till the sun comes up we rode uh down out of that canyon i assisted him hanging onto his bike to get it down over the boulders we walked it and rode out of there in the dark and i honestly uh (laughs) lots of things happened my windshield fell off we strapped that on my uh, Moscow Moto bag uh, holster ripped loose in the crash. I had to take and strap my bags onto his bag. Going through the sand in the dark, I <clears throat> was so dehydrated, so thirsty. And I just tell you, Brock, that I was praying constantly with that bike spinning through the sand in the dark, keep, I said, God, just please keep it moving. Keep it moving. I don't care if it's three inches at a time. Just keep me moving. Keep me moving. We got into Moab at 3 a.m. and uh, went to a 7-Eleven and bought water and drank that on the curb. And, of course, all the 
dehydration that causes cramps ensued all night and spent a couple of days rehabbing in the motel there in Moab. So Lockhart Basin, no, no picnic, not on a loaded bike. Wow. Goodness. Um, what a story, man. Um, and, and and just to put a little more context to this, like that's Lockhart Basin is the middle of nowhere. There is nothing near. There's no like, oh, we'll take an exit and hit back to the highway. Like you're when you're committed, you're out there and it could temperatures could be 120 degrees. Like I'm not even exaggerating. 110 to 120 is is an average hot summer day out there. Correct. Oh, yeah. I, I have no idea how hot it was. And uh but when you drink your water, it's like drinking it out of the hot water tap. So right. that's hot. <laughs> yep. Yep. Uh, yeah, I was such a novice. I had no idea what we were getting into. And uh, it's at least 60 miles, if not more. And like you said, there is no out. And it lures you in if you come in from the south, wow. I guess it is. Yeah. Because it's so easy for a long time. And then it doubles down and triples down and you're committed. You're committed then. Ooh. And on top of that, for some reason our GPSs were not showing our progress and how much further we actually had to go. Oh. I don't know why they just torture. They they got hot or whatever. So we just we had and we literally my um my special forces friend, we were looking to see if there was some way we could the trail got close to the green river where we would just head for the river if wow. we had to. But I mean, he was smart enough. I, I told him I can't go on any further. And he said, just lay down and rest. I fell asleep, but he was smart enough. He woke up, he'd already gotten his bike down the Canyon by himself or my bike down the Canyon by himself. And he said, I need your help. I can't do it by myself. So I got up and stumbled along behind him, hanging onto his rear uh, to keep it from going over as he walked it also. And it's, if you ever see that canyon, I just can't believe it that we went through it in the dark. It's, it's, it's literally boulders. And yeah, you can see plenty of it on YouTube videos if you're, if you're interested in Lockhart Basin. That's extraordinary. I just, I tell anybody if I look on the Utah BDR routes where they're asking questions about whether they should go through it on their loaded, I, I just, I tell them, do your homework, man, do your homework. Uh, and, and I've seen other videos where people had a time like we did and got rescued by a Jeep somehow that had water. But, and then some people, do quite well they're better riders than me <laughs> all i can say because not only is it boulders and steep but there's sand sections right and the sand can yeah. wear you out that's where we ended up in, after dark after getting through that canyon and we thought we're finally on flat ground it turned into sand dunes just sand that's i was just like i said i was just i was praying out loud to myself Dear God, bless, just please keep me moving forward. Keep me moving forward. Dog walking, that thing. <laughs> it was like, if if something else happens here, I mean, we're on the cusp of pushing the, the uh, rescue button on our on our garments. Yeah. Wow. That's 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 insane. Well, so you golly, I'm glad I'm I'm glad you made it through there. I have uh uh, goodness, I have so many more questions, but I want to, I want to ask you. So after you've gotten, after you went through this and did the whole trans America trail, like you experienced some really, really highs and some really, really lows. And after it's all done, you survived your life to tell about it. You have these incredible stories. And that to me is one of the great things about adventure riding is like, you end up with these really great stories and there's something that you and I, when we met, there's something that you and I were talking about. We're going to get into that here in a second. These stories and these interactions and being out in nature and discovering 
food, uh, meeting locals, all of these things make life rich. And that's that's a great segue to let me talk about the mistake I made and uh, and see what people think about this, um, which got us to <laughs> uh, to this subject. I you and I met and and uh, at Sargent's in uh, Tamichi Creek, Colorado, we started we started riding together. And then get home, we start editing video, and I put the video out with a picture, like a thumbnail of of us at the river where they were surfing. Now, to me, that, or probably for both of us, that was the most fascinating part of the day is to watch people surfing in Colorado. Like, what? <laughs> yeah. Right? Like, like mm. I, I, it sounds like a joke, but they're surfing, like legitimate surfing in Colorado at the river there in uh, Salida, Salida, whatever they call it. And yeah, so I used I used that picture. It's a really wonderful picture. I put that at the, as the thumbnail. I posted the video a few days ago, and crickets. I'm telling you, no one watched it. I had 27 views, and I was like, "What is going on?" And so I panicked and was like, okay, this video is too good for people to not watch. I have to change the thumbnail. So like, but I didn't have any pictures or any other assets to use to create the thumbnail. So I just was like, I just took a screenshot of the, of the video and just put it up there. And, and I had just talked to some friends of mine who were staying at my house and we watched the video and we were talking about this experience that you and I had. And the girl that was sitting on the couch here, her name is Andrea. She goes, she goes, you know what? That's really like really rich. And that's my favorite part about the these stories in this video is just how 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 rich you are about mm. you know meeting meeting Joe. And I went, that's it. And so I put on the thumbnail, uh, getting rich. And then uh, the title of the video is uh something about the uh, uh, adventure community and how a lot of times we miss it. Okay. I put that up there, the video just goes boom and like 6000 views in like 48 hours like just started all of a sudden you know and Whoa. not not even 48 hours like all cool. i did was ch change that thumbnail but here's the problem that was mistake number 1 mistake number 2 was i didn't edit the video with that whole story as the the the, the idea of us being rich I didn't explain it well enough. So I think there's probably some people going, what are you talking about? The title and the video is not quite there. Now we, you and I talk about being rich. We're not talking about money. We're talking about the experiences and the friendship, this serendipitous moment that you and I had. And we're like, dude, we are going to be friends. And I remember you said in the video at the end of this video, I think we're going to be friends for life. And I really do believe that we've talked probably every week since then. And uh, we text all the time and we are, we're friends. And to me, that's just so rich. I'm gonna let you speak into this a little bit. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, because I follow you on YouTube uh, very closely. I realized you had changed, uh, changed the thumbnail real quick and you did it very quickly because I hadn't watched the video, but I saw the thumbnail when I came back to watch, I said, that's not the video. That's not the video. <laughs> what? Well, I, I think he's changed the thumbnail. And um, one of your texts to me, you said, I, I'm not sure people are getting it. And I had to think about it a little bit to see what, <laughs> realize what you were even getting to. And uh, now I understand exactly. That whole video um, well, it started off with a serendipity, ser serendipitous uh, meeting up with you. I'd seen your, you, your videos doing the scar and the mid Atlantic. I said, no, this is a, this is a strange dude. This is a strange dude, but he looks pretty cool. That beard and all. Uh, so, uh, I recognized you when I arrived there at Tamichi Creek and, uh, said, I gotta go, I gotta go talk to Brock. And, uh, uh, that was, uh, how it, how it came to be and and i i i just there were so many things leading up that day in my ride to have arrived at tamichi creek on the evening that you arrived is just um i just have to say it's probably was providential a god moment 
because got a new friend and realized, I mean, I'm on a, I was on a journey from Washington state back to Virginia, um, riding the same DR650 that I took out there in 2019 on the TAT. And so I'm on a long journey and, uh, you know, the meeting the people along the way is, is the highlight. You get tired, you get, um, hungry, you get, uh, various things happen that it, every day is not a bowl of cherries, you know, <laughs> and I was not feeling very good. I think I had altitude sickness and uh, had spent several days in the high country of uh, the Rockies and I wasn't feeling very well. So I, i made a beeline after I came down off of uh, through um, Lake city. I made a beeline for Tamichi Creek. <laughs> Otherwise I'd probably been a day behind you and uh, wow. so glad that I did because, you know, from starting the tat in 2019, I just told my wife, I'm going to do it if I got to do it by myself. And then I found guys on ADB rider that were planning to do it and looking for a group to join, joined up with about six of us, three of us leaving from Virginia. One flew in from Seattle with his bike to the Carolinas flew his bike in, <laughs> shipped it and flew in. But, you know, we stay in contact ever since. And uh, so the community of ADB riding brings together adventurous spirits, and then you become friends. And and uh, that's the richness of, of this. I guess you can do that playing golf, but you probably see the same buddies day in and day out. When you're on a motorcycle covering hundreds and hundreds of miles, you're going to meet new people every day. And that's the richness that I think you were trying to convey in your title there. Uh, it certainly has enriched my life. And <clears throat> I'm 73 now and thankfully still have the health and strength to get out there and do this. Otherwise, look what I've been missing. <laughs> look what I've been missed. I would have missed. Uh, very grateful for the community and 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 the, uh, the the strength I have to still do it. I'm thankful for that too. And so, if I pose the question, how to get rich? I think that uh, as I've talked to a lot of my friends and some who have been super successful and have made lots of money and have bought lots of toys and lots of you know houses and properties and all sorts of things. Man, what I have learned is that. All of that stuff doesn't make one truly happy. There seems to be an insatiable kind of hunger, a desire for more, more, more. But the true richness, like how to be really rich, is the things that are not so tangible. It's relationships, it's community, it's truth, it's beauty, it's local good food <laughs> uh, yeah it's we have strangers. some local good food there in Salida, <laughs> didn't we it's Man. it's surfing yes of course <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah and so i just wanted to kind of point to that a little bit and i didn't do a great job in the video i think that it's there but i almost it was it wasn't on the nose so it was a little bit more like you have to kind of discover what we're talking about in the video so if you haven't watched it make sure you go and watch, but I wasn't so clear. It was more like you have to discover what I was talking about or what we were talking about. And so hopefully now, maybe even through this conversation, people go, aha, that makes sense. And some people might even want to rewatch the video and go, okay, I get it now. And so I, yeah. I talk about these things a little bit, but, and that's why part of the title says many people miss it. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Well, going forward, you'll uh correct your mistake and make that a maybe a point yeah i think it's a great point um uh i i have probably uh addressed that some in, in going forward myself yeah uh yeah. you know we we are like-minded uh individuals if you're going to uh, own an adventure bike and you're going to go out and basically you know face the elements and and uh, your wits against nature to a degree and your skill against the mountain, those things 
are uh, a commonality among us writers. And then when we meet up, we already have a basis of which to uh, enrich ourselves and one another. Just a starting point right off the bat. Yeah. And and there's something that you and I were talking about before this, before we started recording, before uh, it may have been earlier this morning, but we were talking um, about like we go out there and ride and we kind of get so caught up in the experience of it because the, the experience of riding and riding together and that sort of thing and meeting people that is so rich in itself that f- filming it is such an afterthought. Sometimes we almost forget like, Oh, we should film this because we have to tell these stories. <laughs> and so I think that I am guilty of that a lot. Like, Oh yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to be filming this, you know? So, uh, Oh, I remember I have a drone <laughs> I have a drone in the back there. Forgot all about it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I made, we, we, so we were editing this video last minute for some other weird circumstances, but however, my favorite drone shot that I got of the two of us, I forgot to put it in until after I'd published it. And I was like, I was so angry. I was so angry. I may have to try to figure out how to put it in. I may put it up as a short or something. I don't know, but I was so bummed because we worked so hard to get that beautiful shot and it was so epic. And I saw oh, yeah. just, I forgot to put it in. Well, I looked at I looked at it look actually looking forward to that shot and I said, "What? Well, it must have it must have uh, messed up on it. Maybe the drone didn't something happened." So, <laughs> now, now I'm even more angry, but, but here's the thing, like, like we, we make, we make so many mistakes. Like it, it's a lot, it's a lot to keep up with. Like I'm running multiple cameras. I think we run, I don't know. I think I have like seven cameras on me and they're all different. Oh. They're not running at the same time, but right. I'm, try- I'm trying to choose and, and trying to, Oh, I need to set this camera up. I need to fly here. I need to do that. That. And it's like, it, there's a lot going on and then making sure audio works. There's just a lot going on up here. And sometimes yeah. when I get home, it's been weeks and I've already filmed 3000 more miles. It's like, sometimes I forget about a certain moment and we just somehow overlook that one. I'm really bummed. I've got to figure out, I don't know, maybe I'll make a whole video on just that clip and put it out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, or Hey, I got an idea. I got an idea. What if I send you the clip and you put it on your video? That would be great because okay. I'm a week, I'm a week behind you and uh, you're going to be somewhere in my next upcoming video. And that would be awesome because that's what we're going to do. I'm going to, oh. I'm going to have, I'm going to get that clip and I'm going to send <laughs> it over to you because it it's so good. I want you to, I want you to use it. If you can, if you can, no, no, no pressure, but if you can, oh, I, you know, believe me as a 73 year old learning this whole, well, videoing and then learning to edit and make something worth watching is very enjoyable, but it's um, a, definitely a learning process. And so if he sends me a clip, folks i'll probably have to figure out how to get that clip and then get it into my uh computer (laughs) i'll probably have to call my uh my son (laughs) we'll um all right we'll talk after this i'm gonna i'm gonna we're gonna figure this out because that's gonna be great and you guys have to go watch joe's channel i joe have been watching your channel and you're i think you're a great editor you're a great storyteller People love you. They love your videos. You have so you have a lot of people watching. And to my surprise, the people that watch my channel, a lot of them are also watching your channel. And then they they kind of told me about it in the comments. And I was like, wow. So everyone else seems to know Joe. I'm a little bit late to the party because uh, I didn't know you had a channel when we first met. But everyone else seems to know all about you. And uh, they just adore you. So I'm just so <laughs> Uh, you you are you are amazing and i've and i've made that clear uh in in many different ways and so i'm just thankful for your friendship and uh i want to ask you a couple more questions though um back to this idea of adventure and uh being like truly rich i would like for you i i think i defined it but i didn't want to put words in your mouth i want you to kind of define um like what is truly like how to get rich. That's probably the question, how to get rich. Now we, 
we've already established it's not it's not financial gain but i'd like for you to just i'm putting you on the spot here but i'm just going to ask you like speak to that define that in in whatever mm-hmm. way you, that you want to you know, <clears throat> well you already uh, touched on it in that it's certainly not monetary wealth uh although it helps <laughs> it does help to be comfortable and have warm house uh, when it's uh, six inches of snow outside and all those sort of things but um uh first of all i i think that the way our our society has moved in recent years and has been steadily becoming more technologically involved in people's expectations of where their life will go when they leave college and head into adulthood have been uh, blown out of proportion as to expectations versus what has actually started happening, particularly financially and maybe career-wise with downsizings of corporations and whatnot. So a lot of disappointment, uh, the uptick in um, uh, mental illness and that sort of thing going on out there, the stresses on people's lives. Uh, <clears throat> they need an anchor. They need an anchor in their lives. And for me, these motorcycles and adventure riding is a huge part of my mental health, but you need a bigger anchor than that. That's an a, a that's an assist. I think you need to find a connection with your creator and God. That's my anchor and source of peace. He promises peace to us, not that we will be surrounded by peaceful circumstances, but in in stress and difficulties, we will still have peace. And that's the richness that everyone may not realize it but they're seeking and need and can find it's available and when you uh meet other people out on the trail you meet them in your daily lives the grocery store the convenience store your motorcycle salesman or whatever (laughs) uh there's a there's a richness there that you can brighten their life you, they can brighten your life. Our human interactions is where richness uh, can also be found. And, and uh, yeah, I think the wealthiest people find their greatest joy probably in, in sharing that and alleviating the burdens and bringing joy to other people in, in some fashion. So, uh, yeah. I'm not one of those top one percenters, but the Lord has blessed me enough to be comfortable in life. And I, I, I want to bless others in every way, whether it's financially or um, uplifting their spirit with a contact during that, the day. That, that's where richness lies. And I hope anyone out there that's feeling an emptiness in their life will try and fill it with uh, something they maybe haven't tried before. Spiritually, we're we're spiritual beings. You need to address that if you haven't already. Yeah. Yeah, what do you think? Beautiful. I mean, you're well said, and I think you and I have talked about these things on a a number of occasions. You and I have actually done a number of Bible studies together, and we've talked about these things. Uh, over the past few months. And so, yes, um, I I would agree with everything that you said. And so, um, wow, this is good. I'm so glad we were able to sit down and kind of, and kind of recap, I I should say, or connect and, and just kind of talk and bring people into our story a little bit. And I'm thankful that people are taking time out of their day to watch what we do when we're Mm. out there riding and putting out videos i'm just so glad that people are watching them so uh man it was so good to meet you and uh, i can't wait to ride with you we're gonna ride together soon right like as soon as it gets warm huh (laughs) every day i'm thinking about uh warm weather and what i'm gonna do in the the spring and the summer and the fall already you know yes i'm looking forward to uh 
I'm really looking forward to getting together with you on your ride you have planned in Utah. That's that's the got to do on my list and where I can fill in between uh, that and now in September, I'm going to, I'm going to do so. And hopefully, yeah, maybe in Tennessee, I think you've got something in the spring. Yeah. I, I rode in Tennessee early spring a couple of years ago and it was like 34 degrees one morning. So hope that doesn't happen. <laughs> no, I'll call the weatherman and make sure that doesn't happen. I'll tell him like, Hey, don't give us one of those. Give us nice weather. And I'm sure he'll, he'll take care of us, but uh... yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. But we are we're posting dates. Uh, if you guys want to come and ride with me or with Joe and I, come ride with us. We're posting dates of where we're going to be, and uh, it's at motomission.com. So you can go and see all the rides, and 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 it's free. We don't charge people. We don't. We're not a tour guide. We just we're just hanging out. If you want to come and hang out with us, have a meal, ride some trails. Come on, we're putting those dates up there on the uh, on the website. So Moto Mission dot com joe you're awesome um mm -hmm. thank you so much we're uh we're gonna we're gonna see you soon but for everybody else thank you so much for listening please go back and watch that other video that i was talking about um maybe maybe you'll see it through some through some different eyes now so uh like subscribe you know do your thing so there's a lot more adventure coming <laughs> amen to that